Hey there, my name is David Wad, and today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use Corda on GCP. Let's get started. All right, so for this tutorial, we're actually going to be running four Corda nodes inside of two VMs inside of GCP. So I have a demonstration GitHub repo set up here with a link underneath the like button. I have a VM1 folder and a VM2 folder and a commands.sh file that will be commands we're going to run when we actually have access to those nodes. So start by cloning this repository and then we'll jump into GCP. Now within GCP, you're going to want to create your own project for this. In my case, I have a project called Corda Demo. You're going to want to click inside of Compute Engine and you're going to want to go to VM Instances. Inside of here, you'll notice that I actually have two VMs that I've already created. And so I'm going to show you exactly how I made them so that you can do the same thing. You're going to want to start by clicking Create Instance. Inside of Create Instance, we'll create a name. In my case, I created a VM1 and a VM2. Here, I'll create a VM3, just for demonstration purposes. And in my case, I went with an E2 medium, as far as the machine type. Most of these things we're not really going to need, except for allowing HTTP and HTTPS traffic. And we're going to want to change the Linux distribution to Ubuntu as far as operating system. So Ubuntu, we're going to want to go for really 16, 18, or 20 should all be fine. In this case, I'll pick 20. Hit select, and then go to create. When this is done, you should be able to see an external IP address over here, and then you'll see options for how to connect to it. One thing you'll want to be aware of once your VM has finished provisioning is the firewall rules. So you're going to want to make sure that your Corda network can take all traffic. So if you click on the three dots on the right side of your VM's details, you will want to go to view network details and you'll see an option to click firewall rules. So if you take a look at that, you'll see that I've created two different firewall rules here. One called Corda demo firewall and another called Corda demo firewall egress. All you need to do is make sure that you've allowed, essentially, in our case, all protocols and ports. I've set the priority to 100 just to make sure these rules execute first. And for all IP ranges, egress and ingress traffic, meaning outgoing and incoming traffic is all allowed. And just so you can see what that looks like, I'll click on this rule and then hit edit. So you can see priority 100, destination IP ranges, we are allowing everything here, but you can, of course, do more and we're allowing all protocols and ports. Now that we're back in the terminal, I'm going to specify a few things that might help you when you're trying to connect to your nodes. First thing I recommend doing is setting up the gcloud command. You'll notice that the gcloud compute tools are gonna to be really helpful for you here. In this case, for example, gcloud compute SSH VM1 or VM2 is gonna be really useful for you. And of course, gcloud compute SCP, which will be really nice. And I'll show you why in a second. So for the next part of this, I would recommend configuring the gcloud SDK. It'll make it a lot easier for connecting to your nodes. For example, you'll be able to run commands like gcloud compute SSH VM1 or VM2. You'll be able to connect to your nodes directly without a lot of pain. You'll also want to look inside of these folders. We have commands.sh VM1 and VM2. And the first thing we'll need to look at is actually how the Corda services we're about to provision will look. Now, on both of these VMs, we're actually using Docker Compose to run them. So let's take a look at one of them and see how it comes out. Inside of VM1, you'll notice we have Docker Compose VM1.yaml, a party A folder, and a notary folder. So inside of the Docker Compose VM1, we see something that looks a lot like what we'd expect. Version 3.0 and two services defined, notary and party A. It's not surprising that this is what we see. We have the image, we have the ports that it'll need, and various configuration information, certificates, persistence, logging, and the core apps themselves. So we define this and the ports that these nodes will need for both Corda services. Then we do the same thing for Party B. Now, the one thing we have to make sure that we do is we have to go into the actual node configuration for these two services, Party A and Notary, and look at the peer-to-peer -peer address. You'll notice here the peer-to-peer -peer address for party A is set to the public IP address of the actual VM within GCP. Now, whatever your, whatever your machine is that you've set up to be VM1, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you use that IP address 
that public IP address that we've configured to be accessible and make sure that you use that for the peer-to-peer -peer address inside of this configuration file. You're going to want to do that for party A. Then you're going to want to do it for the notary as well. And so you'll notice here that the peer-to-peer -peer address is the same, 34692974. Then you're going to want to do the same thing for VM2. Similar story with VM2, docker compose vm2.yaml, a party B and a party C. So if I look at party B, nodes configuration, 34724261, and that is the same IP address as my GCP VM2. So just make sure that you've got the right VM's IP addresses inside of the right quarter services, just so that we don't get this crossed when we don't want it to be. So when you configure this correctly, party B and party C inside of the VM2 folder will have the same peer-to-peer -peer -peer address, and that will be the same as the IP of your actual uh, GCP machine that you have configured to run Docker for you. So we've got the right IP addresses, so now we just have to worry about copying the files. Just for an example of the commands to copy into gCloud, you'll want to use something that looks like this. I will be copying into a folder called demo. You should see it discover the zone and start copying the files over pretty quickly. All right, once you have copied over the folder, I want you to run commands.sh. You can do that with a nice quick commands.sh with a dot slash in the front. That just runs the command. When you run this, it's worth taking a look at the stuff inside. It's nothing too surprising. It doesn't update. It installs some packages for you, makes sure Docker is set up correctly, and then installs Docker Compose for you. So once you have run that, which may take a bit, then come back and go into the correct folder based on which VM you're on. Once you are inside VM1, you're going to want to run Docker Compose on the particular file for the services you want to run. In this case, I have my VM1 open right over here on the left. So I'm going to run docker-compose-f. I'm going to pass the file name, which is just the docker compose vm onyaml And then I'm going to pass the up directive, telling Docker to run this docker compose file. When you hit enter, when you hit enter, you will have all of the file system layers be pulled, all, all of the images will be pulled by Docker, and you should see something like what you see on the right here, where party B and party C are running with their specific ports. You'll see SSH server listening, etc. This will take a little bit, but you're going to want to do this for both the VM1 folder on VM1 and the VM2 folder on VM2. And once you've run those and you see Docker Compose running here, you should be all set. You're going to want to double check the permissions on some of these folders. You may need to reset some of those to give Docker the permission to write new files inside of these folders. Once all your services are actually running, you are good to go. In my case, I'm actually going to use the Node Explorer to demonstrate how this works. So for our purposes, the question is going to be, of course, how do we connect using the Node Explorer? So I'll actually pull it up over here. And the Node Explorer needs a couple things in order to access a quarter node. You will need the host name or the IP address, the port, and the RPC username and password. So in order to get some of this information, you're actually going to want to look back, unsurprisingly, at the node configuration. So in this case, I'm going to pull up Party A's node configuration. I'm going to pull that up here. Just some notes to point out about this configuration. Party A is running inside of Paris, France. Here's that IP address one more time. And the RPC settings address is actually what we're going to want to use to get that port. And we know where VM1 is running because we looked at this before when we provisioned the machine. And we've outlined the user inside of the users array here. We've given uh, a user1 user with a password of test, not safe for production, access to pretty much everything it could need. So I'm going to jump back to the Node Explorer and type some of this in. First thing I'm going to do is the IP address. Then we're going to want to get that admin settings address. Then we're going to have the username, which is going to be user1, and a password of test. And when I hit connect, it connects successfully. Now, once we're in the Node Explorer, we've gotten pretty much everything we need to do. We've created a function in Quarter Network. We now can run transactions, access the vault, change settings, and visualize the network. 
And in the network, we actually see that these nodes are available with their public keys and locations and addresses all around the world. In our case, we're running party B in New York, party A out of France, the notary running in the UK, and party C running in Australia, which is right about there. So we're all set. You can now use this network to simulate transactions and do all kinds of interesting use cases and run all kinds of our developer samples on top of this if you wanted to. All right, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and found it helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the like button and the notification bell to find out about more videos like this one. I welcome you to reach out to us on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and on our public developer Slack where we hold regular office hours. And of course, check out the new Corda developer training. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you out with anything you want to build with Corda.